Hi, I'm Dan. Welcome to Polar Currency and video number 15, my top 10 $2 bills. My collection has over 20 type $2 bills, meaning no significant design changes. It was difficult to narrow down and I didn't limit my choices to just US currency. My selection is based on appearance, both front and back, and if the note has a good story. Maybe I'll be sharing an historical sidebar or two. Like many collectors, my favorite denomination is the $2 bill. I really don't know why. Maybe they just feel like an anomaly or that many Americans think $2 bills are rare or not even printed anymore. The $2 bill has more peculiar rituals attached to it and history unlike any other denomination. Many people receive them in change and stick them in their sock drawers never to be seen again. A lot of people keep a $2 bill in their wallet for luck. I'm one of them. I keep the one my dad had in his wallet after he passed in 2020. The $2 bill is known for good luck or bad luck and for keeping unsavory company. The deuce has been associated with racetrack gambling, strip clubs, prostitution, and in the late 1800s was allegedly used to bribe voters. Back in the day, superstitious people would rip off the corners to reverse the curse when receiving such a socially unfit banknote. At the end of the day, the $2 bill has always been unpopular in commerce and never gained a foothold with the public. Some say it's because retailers don't have room in their cash drawer. I mean, seriously, it can't be that difficult. The 50 and the 100s go underneath anyways. For me, it was the first type collection that I put together, and one of my favorite collector items is my framed full sheet of $2 bills. And both are still hanging in my office and have been since the late 1990s. Well, enough of that. On with our countdown. Number, Number 10. 10. I have to go with tradition, and that means the original small size Series 1928 United States note, aka legal tender note. The Red Seal $2 features Thomas Jefferson, founding father, writer of the Declaration of Independence, and the third president. Since the U.S. Treasury began issuing paper currency, this has been the only portrait of Jefferson used on U.S. banknotes beginning with Series 1869. The portrait is believed to be a variation of Gilbert Stewart's 1805 painting of Jefferson, although facing right instead of left. The series 1928 makes my top 10 because of the bold red seal and serial numbers and the large numeric 2. Nostalgia alone keeps this note as one of my favorites as I remember receiving these a few times when I was a kid in the 1970s. The reverse depicts Jefferson's home, Monticello, that's located in north central Virginia near Charlottesville. Construction started in 1872, but it would take another 30 years to complete. Regarding the notes of Series 1928, I find it interesting how the green reverse color has changed over time. The Series 1928 is more of a bright forest green that turns duller after World War II with the Series 1928F, and then the color changes again to an even more drab olive with Series 1963, and that still continues today. Number 9. Number nine. Just having the Series 1886 silver certificate, the very first $2 silver certificate, in my collection is worthy of my list, even though this note maybe grades out VG8, but you know what? I don't care. I've got it. The small red seal and blue serial numbers are still visible. The portrait is of Winfield Scott Hancock, a major general and Union Civil War hero who lost a very close 1880 presidential election to James Garfield. And the reason that Hancock got on this note? Guess when he died? February 9th, 1886. Being the first $2 silver certificate makes you wonder who got kicked off the note. Maybe John Adams. You know, second president, $2 bill, number two. Get it? No. Okay. The reverse displays a stunning arrangement of engraving of what I'll call version 2.0 of the Lazy Deuce. The ornate design forms a 2 laying down. I say 2.0 because of the original Lazy Deuce, the $2 national banknote dating back to 1863. The short run series of 1886 was only issued for 5 years because guess what? Somebody died. The skill and time that it took to create this beautiful detailed reverse is why the series 1886 silver certificate is in my top 10 twos. The banknote also ranks number 73 on the 100 Greatest American Currency Notes. Number 8 
I'm sure some of you may be scratching your head that the Series 1896 Silver Certificate only ranks number 8. Believe me, I I'm a fan, just not a huge fan. Good enough for my top 10 twos, though. I greatly appreciate the artistry of the educational series note titled Science Presenting Steam and Electricity to Commerce and Manufacturing. The allegory depicts the children as steam and electricity. The series 1896 was certainly avant-garde and has a great story behind it. One that you might not have heard of, but that's for another video. The reverse is one of the reasons this note doesn't rank high on my list. Not taking away any of the skill and artistry, but compared to the front, the reverse falls flat and right in line of typical designs of the previous four decades. I do give credit to connecting the reverse to the front. Robert Fulton is depicted on the left. He's credited for developing the first steamboat in 1807. Pictured the right is Samuel Morris, who contributed to the invention of the single-wire telegraph, which runs off electric current. The Series 1896 Silver Certificate ranks number 11 on the 100 Greatest American Currency Notes. Number 7 Now I'm sure I'm going to catch hell for placing the Series 1891 Silver Certificate above the Educational Series. I know it's certainly not a masterpiece, but sometimes content over quantity counts, and the hidden story behind this note that I discovered pushed it up the list. And it features a guy from Minnesota, so there's that. You can check out my full video, Serious Mutton Chops, of this note with the link in the description below. It has a pretty simple layout and you could say that the design clashes in style from left to right. The portrait is of William Wyndham, the 33rd and 39th U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, who served three presidents. You have one guess why Wyndham kicked Winfield Scott Hancock off the $2 silver certificate. Yep, you're learning. Wyndham died January 29, 1891, so we better put him on the new silver certificate. The reverse of the Series 1891 $2 silver certificate has the nickname the bow tie because of its uniquely shaped design. In the late 1880s, design policy was changing to show more white space on the reverse, revealing more of the blue and red threads embedded in the paper, which was a key anti-counterfeiting measure for the times. Ironic that this policy reverted back to almost completely covering the paper in green with the Educational Series in 1896. Number, Number six. 6 Next up is the Provisional Government of Mexico 2 Peso Note Series G of 1915. This note is known as the Veracruz Note when in late 1914 the Constitutionalist Government capital was moved from Mexico City to Veracruz. The banknote was issued halfway through the decade-long Mexican Civil War. The issuance of these notes came less than six months after the U.S. military occupation of Veracruz itself. Needless to say, way too much to unpack in this short time frame, and also why the history places this note in my top ten twos. Originally a brilliant yellow, mine's a little faded, the two peso note features a seated liberty on left holding a plaque in her right hand reading, Constitution 1914 Mexico, and she's extending an olive branch in her left hand. At center is the Mexican coat of arms, an eagle with a snake in its beak perched on a nopal cactus in Lake Texcoco, located in Mexico City. In the background are two volcanoes, Popocatapetl and Extachiwatl, that are located about 60 miles southeast of Mexico City. The reverse features a detailed pattern with the red seal of the Secretary of Finance, Vera Cruz, the Spanish text translates, this bill circulates in accordance with the decree of September 19, 1914, that spans the left and right sides. The center is the illustration of a silver 1904 Mexican peso coin, which was considered a transitional coin during the Mexican Civil War. It's a very traditional reverse design, with the oddity that the seal is actually placed on the back. Number, Number 5, five. Staying international is the Dominion of Canada 1923 $2 banknote that was issued from 1923 to 1934 when the Bank of Canada was formed in 1935. The portrait is of Edward the Prince of Wales wearing the uniform of the Welsh Guards. He later became King Edward VIII who is King Charles III's great uncle. Edward is famous for abdicating the throne of the United Kingdom for an American divorcee. Ooh, the scandal. Edward VIII also thought Hitler was a good guy until, you know, the whole genocide thing. 
So a little monarchy gossip combined with some history placed this bill in the top five. The reverse is printed in a drab olive green pattern with the typical intricate details of the time for many banknotes. Interesting footnote is that the Dominion of Canada is the formal name for Canada when it was formed as a confederation in 1867. As such, Dominion of Canada remains the country's formal, if seldom used, name. Number, Number four. four. The Battleship Note. Because of the nickname, I've got to start with the reverse. The series 1918 $2 Federal Reserve Bank Note, FRBN, is one of the most collectible notes out there. Featuring the battleship USS New York, which was one of the first two ships in the U.S. Navy to carry 14-inch guns. She served in both world wars, but didn't have a very good ending. Another story, another video. The highly detailed and beautiful engraved capital ship almost gives it movement. For sheer brute toys for boys testosterone, this note ranks high on my top 10 twos. And the nickname, I mean, the battleship. The front depicts Thomas Jefferson center left and like all FRBNs has the large Federal Reserve Bank block with the city and state in the center giving them a very unique appearance. The classic scallop blue treasury seal is on the right. And worth noting that FRBNs aren't national banknotes and see the link to what are FRBNs in the description below for the full video. The 1918 $2 FRBN note ranks number 22 in the 100 Greatest American Notes. Number, number three. 3 The Commonwealth of the Philippines $2 Silver Treasury Certificate Peso was issued from 1936 to 1941. The Commonwealth was the last transitional government of the Philippines as a U.S. territory before becoming independent following World War II. The banknote should look familiar as it was printed by the U.S. Bureau of Engraving and Printing. The series 1928 reduced size U.S. currency took the exact peso dimensions that the BEP had been printing for the Philippines since 1903. The note bears the portrait of Jose Rizal, 1861-1896 a Filipino nationalist, poet, essayist, and novelist, Rizal spoke over 20 languages and received doctorates in science and medicine. He became active during the Philippine Revolution against Spain. Rizal, a revolutionary, was executed by Spain when revolution broke out in 1896 and is considered a national hero of the Philippines. This note ranks for me not only just for the history, but because of what U.S. currency could have been with the new small size currency. It's like if you took a U.S. note and made it, um, good looking. It has the feel of a large size currency, but has the familiarity of today's $1 and $2 Federal Reserve notes, but with flavor. The reverse is kind of a showstopper with me with that blue ink. It's kind of like the reverse of a gold certificate. You take a pause when you first see it. The note definitely stands out because of the similar design style to U.S. currency, only it's not in a dull army green. Number, Number two. Two, two, two. The series 1917 United States note makes my top 10 twos because of longevity, beauty, and engraving skills. The note began as the 1869 Rainbow Series legal tender note, and the same front design was possibly issued all the way through to 1927, encompassing six different series. I'm totally editing this later because I was able to pick up a Series 1869 $2 legal tender rainbow note while I was out at the Long Beach Expo in late June, this adding to my Series 1917. So I just had to cut in and include it in my top 10 twos. The artistry of the front engraving scroll work surrounding Jefferson combined with the center vignette of the U.S. Capitol just screams U.S. large size currency. Simply put, it's just an iconic banknote. The reverse doesn't go back to 1869, but first appeared on the second series issue of 1874. Once again, the scroll work surrounding the denominations, the variations of the border clamshells on the top and the shields of the bottom are just incredible. Let's remember here, this was engraved by hands and backwards. And to complete it all, the legal obligation and counterfeit warning text curved to fit the space vertically? Just wow. And now for number one on my top 10 two list. Number, number one. one. 
You may not like it, but my top pick is the 2013 $2 banknote of Barbados. This note was replaced recently in 2022 with a vertically designed polymer note, but I like the horizontal 2013 paper. Maybe it's the Caribbean feel without going overboard, the palette of blue colors or wave patterns representing the Barbadian island nation. The note features John Redmond Bovell, a scientist and agronomist. Bovell is recognized for his research and development to save the sugarcane industry, a large portion of the Barbadian economy in the late 1800s. Redmond has been on the $2 note since the first one was issued by Barbados in 1980. You can learn more from my second World Bank video, just click on the link in the description below for that. The reverse depicts the Morgan Lewis Windmill in St. Andrew. Built in 1727, it was the last sugar mill to operate in Barbados that stopped production in 1947 and is now a museum. Again, history, I like it. The back also continues the wave pattern again. The beauty, design, color, and history all combine to make this my favorite $2 bill in my collection. Well, that wraps up video number 14, my top 10 $2 bills. As you can see in the background, there were other notes that didn't make the cut. Some of them that rank on the top 100 greatest American notes. But it's my list. I hope you enjoyed the list and I would love to hear your thoughts. Many of these notes, as well as a few that were left off the list, will become videos of their own, so stay tuned. I appreciate your time, and if you like what you see, please hit the thumbs up button, feel free to leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in two weeks, and thank you for checking in.